This is section 7.5 on hypothesis tests for population variances, sigma squared, and population standard deviation, sigma. And to do these problems, you'll need to use the 1 and 2S Excel sheet. That's one Excel sheet that has both one uh, standard deviation and two standard deviation. And it will also do hypothesis tests for one variance and two variance. Okay, on this first example here, it says a bottling company claims that the variance and the amount of sport drink in a 12 ounce bottle is no more no more means less than or equal to uh, 0.4 ounces. Okay, so the variance, sigma squared, is no more, less than or equal to, that's a null hypothesis, 0.4. That's our claim. Automatically, that makes the alternate hypothesis, the variance is, a population variance is greater than 0.4. So we're doing a right-tailed test on a population variance. And it says a random sample of 31 bottles has a variance of 0.75. That's your sample variance for this sample of 31 bottles. And it says summarize your results at the most significant alpha level. Well, to do this, again, you go to the Excel sheet called 1 and 2 S's. And we're doing a right tail test here for this population variance. It says summarize at the most significant alpha level. So I'm going to go ahead and start and test this at the 0.1 alpha level, the worst alpha level, and see what happens with that. Uh, the claimed variance was 0.4. In fact, it's claiming that it's greater than 0.4. So that's our border area right there. Sample size was 31, and our sample variance was 0.75. Put that data in, and you get what's called a chi-square test statistic so that you know we have our z-scores and t-score this is a chi-square uh, test statistic if you're doing this without excel you'd look it up in the back of the book the very last page is the uh, test statistics for uh, uh, chi-square at uh, you would go down to a degrees of freedom of 30 and uh, that's pretty much at the bottom of the very last line of the whole book and that you'd go under an alpha level of 0.1 and you'd find this test statistic here of 56.25 uh, sorry, of 40.25. That's your critical value. Now, the test statistic, that's a critical value test statistic. The test statistic is worked out uh, using a chi-square formula, and you get 56.25. Well, if your test statistic is bigger than your uh, critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. So we'll reject it. Also, if your p-value is less than your alpha, you reject it. So now if we're summarizing the most significant alpha level, we play how low can you go and still reject the no hypothesis. And we'll definitely be able to reject it at 0.05. And in fact, we can reject it at 0.01. But that's as far down as we can go and still reject the no hypothesis. If I try 0.001, well, this p-value is not less than 0.001. And I'll just type it in to prove you there that it isn't. So the most significant alpha level is 0.01. So we would say at the 0 0.01, 0.01 alpha level, I was able to show that the variance is significant, the population variance is significantly greater than 0.4. Look at this uh, sample variance, 0.75. That's a lot bigger than 0.4. You know, it's almost twice as big, so that would make you think that the population, that their claim isn't true, that, that it is, in fact, uh, greater than 0.4, okay? That the population variance is greater than 0.4. So you're able to show that at pretty high uh, alpha, uh, level of significance there, you know, lower alpha level, the higher level of significance. So 0.01. That's like saying you're at least 99% sure about this. In fact, you're 99.75% sure about this, that the population variance is significantly greater than 0.4. Okay, we'll do another example here. Okay, on this problem it says the police chief claims that the standard deviation, now this is standard deviation, not variance, standard deviation and response time is less than 3.7 minutes. A random sample of nine response times uh, response times had a standard deviation of three minutes. Test the claim and summarize the most significant alpha level and assume responses are normally distributed. Well, uh, this is what it's given you here, uh, the claim that this population standard deviation is less than 3.7 minutes, less than 3.7 minutes. Now, our sheet doesn't have standard deviation, it has variance. Well, variance is the square of the standard deviation. So we'll need to square this 3.7 so that we can use the sheet. So right here, we're doing a left tail test. And right here where it says claim variance, I'm just going to type equals 3.7 carried up 2 for meaning squared. And that's what it is squared. The sample size was 9. And the uh, variance uh, that we got, let's go back to the problem, the sample variance, well, 
uh, the sample variance, it says from nine responses, the standard deviation was three. Well, that's the sample standard deviation. So if the sample standard deviation is three, the sample variance is three squared or nine. So that's what the uh, sample variance would be, nine. And now what do we get? Well, we get do not reject the no hypothesis right there. And uh, uh, we won't get reject the no hypothesis at any alpha level since we tried 0.1. That p-value, 0.27, is greater than any alpha level we use. It's greater than 0.1, so we do not reject the no hypothesis. So the summary would be I was unable to show that the uh, 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 population standard deviation and let's go back to here to show it. I was unable to show that the population uh, standard deviation was significantly less than 3.7. Unable to show this. Now, where did that, um, I'll show you this on a sheet here at the end. Where did this um, critical uh, value come from? Well, it came from a degrees of freedom of eight, because it's one less than your sample size, eight under a, uh, alpha level of 0.1, and you get 3.489. Where did the test statistic come from? Well, the test statistic, there's a formula for the test statistic for a chi-square uh, test, and the formula is right here. Chi-square is equal to n minus 1 times your standard deviation squared over your population standard, your acclaimed population standard deviation squared. So you could say n minus 1 times your var sample variance over your population variance. That's how you get your uh, test statistic. And then the critical value, let me just go ahead and go to the end of the book here. I'll pause this a second. To get the uh, critical value that we have here on this left tail test, of 3.489, uh, we have a table at the end of the book called the chi-square table right tail probabilities. Well, if the right tail is 0.1, that means there's 90%, sorry, if the uh, left tail, we're doing a left tail test, if the left tail is 0.1, that means 90% is to the right. So we'd actually have to look up, this is one of the hardest ones to look up, but doing it by hand, we'd have to look up 0.9 on a right tail table, and that's the table that we have in the back of the book, right tail table. So we go down to 0.9, and one less than the sample size is your degrees of freedom, and there's your 3.48, uh, 3.489, and that's what we had right there, as your 3.489. Now to see this 50 one, this is a lot easier. It is a right tail test, 0.01, let's check this one out, 50.89. Degrees of freedom would be 30, one less than 31, is your degrees of freedom is 30, and it's 50.89 at an alpha level of 0.01. Since it's a right tail test, we would actually look at 0.01, and we'd go down to uh, degrees of freedom of 30, and this is counting down your degrees of freedom, so it's the last one in the table. And that's a problem with using tables. It can only go so far, and we get 50.8921, and if you check, that's what we had there, 50.8921. So the nice thing with Excel, it doesn't matter what the sample size is. If this was 60, 60 or whatever, it's going to get it, and we don't have to have tables that go clear up that high. It has it for us there. So anyway, that will do it uh, with that section.